posterior cruciate ligament what is the function of it the posterior cruciate ligament prevents the posterior displacement of the femur it is extra synovial it is attached to the anterior lateral aspect of the medial condyle is what you have to basically remember so if you look at the lateral view the anterior cruciate ligaments open chain function is it resists the anterior transition of the tibia and the closed chain function of the anterior cruciate ligament will be it resists the posterior transition of the femur similarly if you take the posterior cruciate ligament the open chain function of it is it resists the posterior translation of the tibia and the closed chain function is it resists the anterior translation of the femur this is a bit tricky to remember um, bit tricky but you need to basically remember what is anterior cruciate um, and uh, what is posterior cruciate now doc this is a classical example of how an injury happens a large valgus producing force at the knee joint because from outwards a another player has hit him that will typically make the lateral aspect of the extended knee to go into valgus and uh, that lead to development of the injury of the knee structures similarly somebody's foot is fixed and he takes a sudden turn at the time of walking another reason for the medial meniscal injury is what you need to be doubly sure about now doc what is this refractive error is the question in um, um, aims november 2017 very easy question the whole exam paper of 300 questions is very easy if you are prepared the same paper looks tough when you are half hearted half baked half cooked preparation you have done so i don't want you to be that so here the image is falling before the retina which is the classical feature in case of myopia where the image will form beyond retina is the feature in the case of the hypermetropia is what you have to basically remember very good most of you are already champions in ophthalmology for almost two weeks we discussed uh, almost 10 days we discussed ophthalmology pgi last uh, 15 years question papers now doctor what is this cranial nerve palsy where at the time of expected abduction during conjugate gauge the eye is unable to abduct whereas it is able to adduct so obviously easiest cheapest question in the entire world that is the abducent nerve palsy is what you need to remember invariably i can see sean chaco saying oculomotor no 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 it is the abducent you can see no doctor on the lateral gaze this is unable to abduct whereas on medial gaze both eyes are able to gaze properly so that's the point now most common tumor of the lacrimal gland is the question of the aims november 2017 last year so you have the non hodgkins pleomorphic adenocystic so uh, the intraorbital tumors is one of the favorite question of the examiner now looking at the histopathology can you recognize what is this tumor of the lacrimal gland which histology it is so it is the one which is adenoid cystic carcinoma is what you are able to see now a patient presents with the glaucoma a bulging cornea and what is the most likely cause once more 
PGA Chandigarh last 15 years papers ophthalmology when we discussed every exam invariably they ask diabetic retinopathy one question on keratoconus one question on herpes simplex if you know the high yield topic names also you can sometimes win the exam keratoconus staphyloma and keratomalacia you need to be doubly sure so a glaucoma with the bulging of the cornea as a complication so that is where you need to reach the conclusion a 60 year old diabetic male decreased vision on reading fluorescent angiography has been shown to you so what is your answer so there is no huge or a large hemorrhages or neovascularization is not at uh, scene so that is the reason it is still in a non-proliferative diabetic retinopathy is what you need to remember now once more let us quickly review the various histologies very happy to see 154 online students jubiliantly ready to attack the examiner the moment he gives you the question paper right so uh, those questions which you are feeling hey i need to read that feeling ana hai e do gante mein aapko you pick up around 10 topics from this two hours of discussion and just go back to the u medico video library and review them the past dnb question bank theory about them and play a quiz if you can do that after this discussion is over there is a most productive way you are using these two hours of the evening with dr murli bharadwaj that's all my dream that you need to do that out of the questions of the recent question papers we discussed pick up those some 10 topics hare isme mai dhyan se revision karna is the kind of feeling you need to get at the end of these two hours so this is like a hand picking session of these two hours with me is what i want to tell you so these are the micro aneurysms hemorrhage cotton wool spots is what you can be able to see then the hard exudates the new blood vessel formation near the optic disc and uh, uh, the blot hemorrhages so this is how the progression of the diabetic retinopathy you should basically remember <clears throat> so on fluorescent angiography examiner gave you actually a non proliferative diabetic retinopathy how does a proliferative look like you can find on the optic disc area neovascularization and the presence of large bleed is the way by which proliferative diabetic retinopathy with the leakage of the fluorescein is what you will classically see this is a normal fluorescein angiogram let us quickly look how the fluorescein angiogram looks like as the fluorescein uh, what are the various phases this is called the arterial phase or uh, first once you have injected into the cubital vein the arterial phase may fluorescein fills the arteries but the veins are not yet filled so first is arterial phase then the second is early venous phase where slowly along with the arteries veins are also getting filled with the fluorescein dye then this is a complete fill of both the arteries and veins in with the fluorescein dye then this is the late phase of the fluorescein angiogram where there is a fading of all the dye and only optic disc is the one which you can be able to see so this is how arterial venous both getting filled and then fading this is the four phases so in a non proliferative diabetic retinopathy you can identify the presence of the micro aneurysms exudates etc etc then once it is proliferative diabetic retinopathy you can see the neovascularization around optic disc um etc etc you need to be very sure so this is another example of a proliferative diabetic retinopathy in the last phase um of the fluorescein angiogram is what you need to remember